What are we learning in math workshop this week? This week it's all about arrays. Arrays can be used as a strategy to solve multiplication problems. And by the end of this lesson, I would like you to be able to answer the question, how can arrays be used as a strategy to solve a multiplication problem? We have two new terms for vocabulary this week. We're working on the word arrays and also the word dimension. And why are we talking about arrays and dimension and multiplication? Because our third grade Common Core State Standards said third graders should be able to represent and solve problems involving multiplication. One strategy that they should be able to use are arrays to represent the problem and to determine the unknown number. So let's take a minute to think about a problem. You and 13 friends are going to watch a movie. Maybe they're even coming over to your house to watch a movie. How many ways could you arrange the chairs so that everybody would be able to see? There's lots of different ways this could be done. The way that we arrange the chairs would be called an array of chairs. Here, there are two rows of chairs and there are seven chairs in each row. So we could determine that there are 14 chairs in all because 2 times 7 equals 14. The arrangement of chairs could also be represented as a rectangular array. The dimension of this array are 2 by 7. We simply say this as 2 by 7. We have two rows with 7 in each row. So we could say 2 times 7. There are other ways that we could arrange 14 chairs. Here we have a 1 by 14, one row with 14 chairs. We have a 2 by 7, two rows with 7 chairs in each. A 7 by 2, seven rows with two chairs in each, and a 14 by 1 that we have 14 rows with one chair in each row. These numbers 1, 2, 7, and 14 are factors of 14 because all of these numbers could be found in the dimensions of our arrays making a product of 14. So what we need to do is make sure that we record our two new vocab words for this week. We need to record on our organizer the word dimension, which is the length and height of an object, arrays, which is a set of objects or numbers arranged in order, often in rows and columns. So go ahead and take out your Unit 5 vocab organizer and record these definitions on the organizer. You can pause this video while you're recording the definitions, and then when you're ready to go on to the next part, come back and push play. Okay, so now that we know about arrays and dimension, let's see how it works. Imagine that these 12 orange squares are chairs, and you need to arrange them in straight rows to watch a play. The chairs must be arranged so that there is the same number in every row and no chairs can be left over. How many chairs would we put in each row and how many rows would there be? So for example, if I had these, I might decide that I want to start with two rows and then I would place these one chair in each row or my squares that represents the chairs and see if I can make straight rows with none left over. So I make my rows and I try to do as straight as I can using this. It'll be easier with your cubes. And I try to put them in straight rows and have them right next to each other. Oh, look at that. It looks like I can do that. I can put them in two rows with one, two, three, four, five, six in each row. So here's an array of two by 6. There are many other ways that we can make 12. So what I want you to do is look at the clock and I want you to see in 3 minutes how many ways you can come up with to arrange 12 cubes. After 3 minutes, come back and push play and we'll compare how many ways you came up with with how many ways I was able to come up with. So go ahead and pause, use your cubes to arrange your 12, and when you're ready to move on in three minutes, come back and push play. All right, let's compare the ways to arrange 
our 12 squares. Here, what I thought of was I first put my 12 in, in one row. So here's my one row with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. So on my grid paper, I'm going to go ahead and just place them nice and carefully on it. Um, if I was coloring it, I could also use the crayon and color in my squares. And here I noticed that I had one row. Put my one down here. I have one row of 12 squares. So then I know my dimensions of my array must be a 1 by 12. So my 1 is going to go right there. I'm going to put my 12 right over here. And then I know that under here I would write my 1. Don't forget we can use the X to show our by or a multiplication symbol. Our 1 by 12. Hopefully that was one that you came up with as well. Let's see if we have some other ones in common. These are some other ones that I also found. Let's see if we can get them to... Whoops! Back up. We can get them on our paper. There we go. Okay. So I was able to also arrange on my grid paper. I found that I could do 12 rows with one in a row for 12 by one. I found that I could do three rows with four in a row for three by four. I also saw that I could do four rows with three in it for a four by three. I could also see a two by six. And I also had a six by two, six rows with two in them. Hmm, I'm also kind of seeing a pattern that we might want to talk about in later lessons. Are you seeing a certain pattern? Okay, now it's time for you to show me what you can do. Your task is going to be to find all the arrays for the number 18. You're going to use your connecting cubes to help you arrange them. And then once you have found a way, you're going to record your array on a grid paper. Just like I did on the previous page and just like here on the sample page. Here, I use 14 for, to find ways to make 14. So I put my title, Ways to Make 14. Yours, of course, will say 18. I colored in all of my ways. So I got a 1 by 14, a 14 by 1, 2 by 7, and a 7 by 2. And then, as a little extra challenge for myself, I wondered if I could find the factors of 14 and determine that 1, 2, 7, and 14 are all factors of 14 because they were all factors I used in the dimensions of my arrays. So now your task is going to go ahead to find all the arrays for the number 18. You're going to use your connecting cubes, arrange them, and then record your arrays on the grid paper by coloring in your squares. The sample of my 14 is included here and posted in class for your reference. Don't forget that you need to add your title and I encourage you to try to challenge yourself once you think you found all of your arrays to see if you can list the factors of 18 as well. Make sure that you're working with your partner and that you're doing your best for your math and I can't wait to see all the ways that you can make 18.